Samantha B. Oh, it's been an exciting couple of weeks for those of us following the Mueller investigation, or as we super fans like to call ourselves, the Mulletary. <laughs> Last night, Mueller's sentencing memo for General Flynn dropped, fetchingly dressed in horizontal stripes. <laughs> and about two weeks ago, a couple of big things happened you might have missed. Just before Thanksgiving, President Trump finally submitted his answers to Mueller's questions in writing. Presumably, it took so long because every other time he tried to answer them, he got burger juice on them and then <laughs> tried to eat them. He's a hungry boy. And then just after Thanksgiving, Mueller's team tossed Paul Manafort in the trash like a picked over turkey carcass. Mueller's office pulled out of a plea agreement with former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort, who was, we later learned, secretly briefing Trump's legal team while ostensibly cooperating with the government. Finding out that one of your star witnesses has been lying to you might seem embarrassing to the special counsel. Like if you got cheated on by your boyfriend, Ed Hardy. No, that one <laughs> is on you. You should have been able to smell the Axe body spray on your sister. But true Mulliacs suspect that the special prosecutor was one step ahead of Manafort the whole time. Maybe he wanted Trump and Manafort to share information so he could show they're both lying the same lies. When did Robert Mueller find out about this? Because there are some people that believe he knew early on and was stringing Manafort along. It's interesting to note that in Manafort's plea agreement, there is no line that says you can't share information with a third party about your cooperation. There is such a line in Rick Gates's plea agreement. Huh. Some people believe that it was intentional and that perhaps Mueller wanted this to happen. I'm not prepared to go that far. That's pretty Hollywood conspiracy theory stuff. Well, I am prepared to go there, and I am pretty Hollywood conspiracy stuff. Here's how I like to picture it. Robert Mueller <laughs> interviewed Paul Manafort, and Manafort was like, here's a bunch of bullshit, I'm telling you. And then Paul Manafort calls his BFF Donald Trump and is all like, say the same bullshit I said so we don't get in trouble. And then Donald Trump is like, oh my god, you're the best. I'm totally putting that in my answers. I fucking love you. <laughs> and Robert Mueller is all, you're both felons. And Karen Smith is the new press secretary. <laughs> Robert Mueller, you sneaky son of a bitch. I think you may have played them all. I never thought I'd be so turned on by a man who always looks like he has mumps. <laughs> if it is what happened, it is absolutely allowed. Despite what you may have heard on Fox News, Mueller does not have to save Trump from incriminating himself. What you're watching is a special counsel that has spun out of control, left way beyond his mandate, laying just perjury traps, and literally trying to coerce people into what we call testa lying. No, testa lying is how women have to pretend that balls aren't gross. <laughs> they look like Muppets and they taste like Muppets. <laughs> Anyway, what Hannity is talking about is lying to federal investigators, and it is a crime. We don't know if any of this will come back on Trump in the end, but at least a few more of the people who surround him will go to jail. And in the spirit of the holidays, let me just say, it is fun to watch these stooges squirm. The focus now turning to Republican operative Roger Stone, who is already striking a defiant tone against the special counsel. Today, Stone told George Stephanopoulos there's no proof he collaborated with WikiLeaks, the site that released thousands of Democratic emails stolen by Russian hackers. Yeah, it's a little hard to believe that longtime Trump friend Roger Stone didn't collaborate with WikiLeaks, considering he dresses like he collaborates with the Joker to destroy Gotham City. <laughs> In recent weeks, Roger Stone has repeatedly denied ever communicating with Julian Assange about the Clinton campaign's emails. Yesterday, Stone announced that he'll plead the fifth and refuse to testify before the Senate, marking the first time he's ever shut up in his life. It's probably wise. Stone appears to have a tell when he's caught doing something wrong. See if you can spot it. Email from you to Jerome Corsi where you say, get to Assange at the Ecuadorian embassy in London and get the pending WikiLeaks email. You have another July 31st email. You say Malik, you tell him, should go see Assange. Of course, he emails back to you on August 2nd. You had another email to another associate of yours, Sam Nunberg, on August 4th. I dined with my new pal, Julian Assange, last night. Ew! Uh, either that's the face Roger Stone makes when he knows he's lying, or he can smell children in the building. <laughs> One Trump associate after another is turning out to be in deep, deep trouble. So this holiday season, as the Trumps gather around the blood tree, Trump will probably be at least a little afraid that it'll be his last Christmas in the White House.
Muller Christmas, everyone. We'll be right back. <laughs>